Hey y'all, it's Remy. How are you guys today? So, I decided to make other cooking videos besides the ones I make for Salted Blue London. I will still be doing those, don't worry. I have a lot of fun with those. But I also just kind of want to show you what I make for my family um, that's vegan. Um, I know my husband and kids still eat meat and they're animal products sometimes, but I do try to make a good portion of meals plant-based. Um, they do meat on the side. So one of our favorites here is cottage pie. A little background, growing up in the Midwest, we always had casseroles or hot dishes if you're from Minnesota. So it's usually something in a pan covered in potatoes or rice or something and then baked in the oven for about 45 minutes at 450, 350, 450, whatever. Two noodle casserole is probably the most common that I've ever heard of. <laughs> uh, hamburger casserole, that's another one, tear tot hamburger casserole. Um, but anyway, so today I'm going to teach sweet potato lentil shepherd's pie. Um, well actually it's a cottage pie because it's made with lentils and not lamb. So a shepherd's pie is anything made with lamb. And a cottage pie is anything made with ground meat. Or meat that is not, um, lamb. So today I'm going to do a sweet potato one. Or a sweet potato mash for the topping. Uh, lentils and then I'm going to clean out my freezer today so we're going to use frozen corn green beans and tinned mushrooms in our filling uh, I'm about to start the lentils so with lentils I do a cup of lentils dry lentils to run away mash <laughs> runaway potato so for lentils I do a cup of dried lentils to about roughly two cups of water and to this to give it a more beefy flavoring I'm going to use my Orington's Farm Beefless Vegan uh, Beef Broth. Beefless Beef Broth. Um, I use it in my chilies too. And for this, so two teaspoons to two cups to a cup of water is a cup of broth. So we're going to do four teaspoons. Or a tablespoon and a teaspoon. Because three, ta te three teaspoons is a tablespoon. We're just going to stir that up real quick. I'm going to add this to my pot of lentils and get that boiling until they are tender. Alright, so we have our lentils on and it's going to take about 20 minutes for them to cook all the way through. In the meantime, we are going to peel and dice our potatoes. Don't forget your garbage bowl. It's my favorite kitchen appliance when I'm cooking. It can be anything. Alright, so we're going to peel and dice our potatoes. Uh, you can do skin on if you want. I, not something I prefer when I'm making cottage pie. This is a recipe I've been making for a couple of years now. Um, it was an experiment I did a couple of years back, and it turned out the whole family liked it, so now it's just one I make every so often. And because it's getting colder around here, well, it's like 83 degrees out right now, so it's not colder, but... It's starting to become the fall months. You start kind of craving, you know, comfort food, soups, warm, hearty meals. As I mentioned before, um, as it starts to get into the winter, fall, winter months, you start kind of craving a harder, harder, heavier food. Um, that's just your body's way of getting you ready for the, your body's way of getting you ready for the harder winter months that are coming. Uh, we are lucky because we live in modern times and we don't have to scounge for food like our ancestors did. Um, where I'm from, a lot of people still butcher and can all late summer, all fall until you can't can anymore and then they'll still like do deer for deer season and ducks and really rural kind of thing. Um, so I'm really lucky that I don't have to do that. I can go to my local grocery store, buy potatoes. Potatoes, you get extra like antioxidants and oh, whatever other benefits you get from eating sweet potatoes. Instead of plain potatoes, like your russets or your Yukons or your red potatoes. Don't get me wrong, they are equally delicious. Um, and I would do that, but I had these sweet potatoes I needed to use up before they started growing eyes. 
Uh, nothing wrong with that. You can just cut them off. I mean, I do. I've done it for years and years, and I haven't had anything bad happen to me. If there is an adverse medical reason to why you should not eat potatoes with eyes on them that you've cut off, I don't know. Uh, I guess you can always consult your doctor on it or a nutritionist. I mean, you just try to get all the skin off you can. And sometimes you get the wonky curves in there. Now we're just going to cut off blemishes. And then I'm just going to go ahead and dice, dice these. Uh, I'm probably, so, in order to get your potatoes well faster, I know if you're anything like my mom, she makes big cut, like, that's how big our cuts are when we make boiled potatoes at my mom's house. I like to cut them a little smaller, they just boil faster. The more uniform size and shape, the faster they'll all cook at the same time. Make sure that they're kind of roughly uniform. I usually do about a medium dice, small medium dice. About like this. It cooks them pretty fast instead of waiting an hour for your potato to cook in boiling water. And if they're too thick, you just you just have them. Stand so I can do the overviews again. It, uh, it fell apart on me, and I have to go get screws to fix it. So you guys can have, like, Food Network quality me chopping instead of just watching me make faces and chop potatoes and whatever else. Or sometimes I tip and tail my potatoes, depending on if the tip has a rough end. And tip and tail simply just means you cut the top and the bottom off. Just small pieces. A lot of people cut large chunks off, and that you're wasting, uh, and that makes you waste quite a bit of the vegetable. So the smaller tip and tail you do, the better. You save your vegetables, uh, and you just prevent overall food waste. The one thing I really like about home cooking is you can do a lot to reduce food waste while you're cooking. Um, some people don't, and that's okay. They just never learn. Which is fine. Which is fine. And that's, you know, the beautiful thing about learning is we're always learning. So, thin slices of peels. Uh, you don't even really necessarily need to peel everything, like carrots, you don't have to peel. Now we have our sweet potatoes cut. I'm going to throw them into some boiling water I have on the stove. And check our linerals. And from... There, I will show you how I make my filling. So, potatoes are on the sto stove in the pot, and the lentils are cooking away. They've got about 10 more minutes still. All right, so for my filling, I'm just gonna use some canned mushrooms, frozen green beans, frozen corn. I don't know if I'm gonna use the whole bag, but like I said, I just can't even use them up. My the Fairway, which is a grocery store here in the Midwest, grocery store chain in the Midwest, always has sales on vegetable, frozen vegetables. At the end of the month, they do like five for five, so I always stock up. Then about every couple of months I go through and clean out my fridge, freezer, just so we don't, doesn't sit. And then, you know, three years later you find a bag of frozen carrots and you're like, that's gross. So for this, I'm going to use about a half a bag of uh, green beans. Don't worry, the rest will be used tomorrow for whatever else I make. To get everything out. About half a bag. Half a bag of corn. And then I'm just going to use two cans of little mushrooms here. I just kind of go with generic store brand stuff. Nine times out of ten, it's made by the same people that make name brand. It's just like private brand or store brand kind of labeled. That's how Costco actually is able to sell some things super cheap. They just co-pack or uh, co-pack, which I mean, not co-pack. Um, they just rebrand. 
just saw the cheaper price places do that actually. Pretty much any store brand is usually just private labeled. Alright. So when the uh, lentils are done, we're just gonna throw it in here and give it a good mix. But before I but before I do that, I'm going to add seasonings into my vegetable mixture here. So I don't I don't measure spices. Um, I'm guessing I'll use about a teaspoon of every spice I'm gonna put in here. Uh, besides the accent, that's kind of liberal. Uh, I, I like accent just because sometimes I don't want a lot of salt. And as mon monosodium mono glucamate, also known as MSG, is a flavor enhancer. It's used like everywhere, especially over in Asia. Uh, here in America, it apparently gives people headaches. I've never had that problem, but I also like cilantro, so that's probably it. Yeah, about a teaspoon. The only reason. Uh, or you use frozen vegetables, they don't uh, always keep that flavor. So if you use a lot, you more of a flavor. I guess I should tell you what I'm using. So I've got onion powder, ground thyme, ground thyme, ground sage, some rosemary. I'm doing a very traditional flavor profile of that's not ground rosemary. That's garlic, salt, and herbs. Alright, well I'm using garlic, salt, and herbs in here. No, I don't have to add garlic salt. That's not rosemary. My husband is making steak for himself and left his seasonings out. It's vegan. This is vegan. Not the steak. The steak is not vegan. But this is. So, we'll just use that. Also, I was going to do a more traditional kind of European English flavor profile, which is lots of herbal herbs. Um, and I guess I'm now doing a more barbecue flavor. That's fine too. And I kind of like to throw turmeric in there. One, for its health properties. And two, I just like the fun yellow color I get. What I really like to do is if I'm making a batch of plain potatoes for the topping, I'll stir in about tablespoon of turmeric and uh, it'll give it a nice fun bright yellow color. And then a little bit of paprika. It doesn't really add any spice but it's just nice to have in there. So our filling is ready to go. All right so the sweet potatoes are ready to be mashed. What I'm gonna do in here, I never measure for mashed potatoes either kind of just go with what I feel. You want these a little firmer because they are going to be your topping so you don't want them super soupy. So you just use your best judgment. Um, this is the brand I normally use for like all my cooking is Planet Oatly or Planet Oat because I can never find Oatly so Planet Oat, one of my favorite. That looks good. Same with butter. I'll measure for this, but I usually never measure. I'm gonna do two tablespoons, I think, would be enough. There'll be the milk and butter on the side in case we do actually need more. And then you just take your favorite potato masher. Hey, my little helper is in the kitchen with me. She just woke up, so she's kind of cranky. All right, so. I'm gonna find another euphemism besides so or whatever word that is. We've got mashed sweet potatoes. They're a little runny. Put too much milk in them. But that's okay. The lentils are just finished. Oh, well, we're just gonna dump them right in our pot or pot or bowl. We're just gonna give this a really good mix. Now. I'm sitting here thinking, a traditional, like, good Midwestern cottage pie has cream and mushroom soup. Now, I don't have any more mushrooms because I use them all here. Our filling's all mixed up, and I think I'm going to make a cream base to put in here. Uh, pretty much it's going to be oat milk and some flour cooked up until it's thick with salt and pepper in it, kind of like a country gravy, just to give it that nice creamy mouthfeel that a lot of us are used to when doing... Uh, shepherd's pot. 
I want it so your mom, you know, you open up the can of mushroom soup and it looks like jelly as you're pouring in. It's gross. Yeah. Uh, but it gives it the nice creamy kind of comforting feeling. So I'm going to go ahead and make... Okay. And we're going to go ahead and make the white sauce or white gravy that goes in, that I'm going to put in for the substitute for cream and mushroom. And I can't remember what blog I found this off of. I'm going to have to look back in my cookbook. I print off recipes I like from different vegan blogs and stuff that I've tested and tried and I like. Uh, and see where I found this ratio. But it's uh, two and a half cups of plant-based milk. And a fourth cup of flour. I whisk mine in. That way you don't get the clumps. And uh, so what this is going to do, when it, you're going to bring it to a simmer, and what it's going to do is it's going to thicken up. The flour and the milk are going to just kind of congeal and be all buddies and turn into a, a pudding type consistency, which is perfectly okay. That's what you want, that's what you're looking for. Because when you put it into your filling, it's going to thin out just like normal cream of mushroom soup will. So we're just going to let this hang out here. I've got it on about medium high so it's going to start boiling and then I'll reduce it down to a simmer. I'm going to go find some mushroom seasoning I have to throw in here to give it that nice umami flavor. This is my umami mushroom seasoning. I have another one floating around here somewhere, I just can't find it. I've used this a few times, my brother got it for me for Mother's Day or my birthday, I can't remember. <laughs> but it just is a nice uh, mix. Uh, seasonings and let's see seasonings white bush white mushroom white button mushroom powder um, and porcini mushroom powder so it's the one that you find in the store the little brown and white ones that you normally buy they just dried them out ground them up with some seasonings and then you get umami seasoning blend uh, it's gonna add a nice depth into once again I'm not gonna I'm just gonna eyeball I'm guessing about two teaspoons and this certain brand that's fine I know you can find the other umami powder I have, I bought off Amazon, it's like shiitake mushrooms. They're just froze dry and then ground up to a nice powder. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to even season it if you want to. It's uh, your liberation of what you want to put in your sauce. If you don't want to put sauce, if you just want to put stock, you can do that too. I just want a good, hearty, uh, kind of childhood fit. So pro tip, if you want to make a sauce and you want to make it faster, like I want to because I'm hungry. Get a big skillet. And it's more surface area instead of a pot. So it'll cause the concoction to go faster. Also, if you're making a gravy like this, you kind of want to stay with it because once it starts boiling, it's going to start thickening. And it can go from a good consistency to very goopy and clumpy really quick. And you just really don't want that. You can, you can try and save it by adding more liquid to it. Uh... I just start over. That's me. Um, all right, I'm back. We've got our gravy filling. It's a little thin, but that's all right. It's fine. We're just gonna pour it right into our filling. Scrape that in there like so. We're just going to mix it right into our corn and bean mushroom mixture. Filling's made. We're just going to pour it into our greased baking dish. This is a 9 by 13. I like to make enough for leftovers. We are filling our pan. Now we're just going to add on our sweet potatoes. We're going to plop them on there, like so. Now we're just going to spread our potatoes over. There is our shepherd's pie. So we're just going to throw this in the oven, let it bake for about half an hour, and I will show you the end results when it is ready. 
Hello, welcome back. We have a completed shepherd's pie. I made way too much gravy, so it's a little soupy. But that is okay. Also, you're best to let it sit for 10, 10, 15, not 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe. After you're done cooking, so things cool down and congeal a little bit. However, I've got two very hungry kids to feed. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cut it and you can look see what it looks like. Yeah, you've got... Yeah, I got some shepherd's pie. There is no way of making this look pretty. Alright, there's 100% no way of making this look pretty. There you go. That's what it looks like. Way too soupy. But it'll be... It'll be better once it dries off, or once it cools down. It won't look so runny. Anyways, that is Sweet Potato Shepherd's Lentil Pie. Until next time, guys.